This party just got started. <laughs> What's up, Machas? It's Uru time. Welcome to Nama Bangaluru. When Kemper Gowda set out to build his dream city in the early 16th century, his mother gave him two instructions. Kerangalam Katu, Marangalam Nera, which basically means build lakes, plant trees. Gowda built a hundred lakes and lined the wide avenues of the city with leafy trees. Bangalore at once feels antiquated with an old colonial charm and refreshingly new and vibrant with a mad entrepreneurial spirit <laughs> that infects everything in a good way. An evidently progressive city, the beer game in Bangalore is unrivaled. With hundreds of pubs and massive craft breweries, keeping the locals and migrants efficiently lubricated. The food scene mirrors the city in the best possible way. No frills, no nonsense different rooms, serving up utterly butterly bene dosas. To military hotels serving up those nose to tail meals before it became hip. The ubiquitous Done Biryani for breakfast, to smash burgers for lunch, and a boozy pub crawl through the evening. Kids are a lot at the bar. Yeah. I like it very much. Bangalore, cool. I love it. Where are we? We are in Geist. We are out in the middle of, I think, post -Kote. So, But how bad is it that both of us are breathing hard just walking from the gate to here? <laughs> no, getting into this, bro. It's the condition of just eating four days in a row. That is true. And then taking naps. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, it's bad. No, today morning I worked out, but... You did? <laughs> Rizal is hanging on. This is He's hanging on to his dear life. <laughs> to the Rizal by his belt. Yes. <laughs> Hi, hi, how are you? Hi, 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 hi. Ready? So finally, after so many episodes, we get an episode where we are at the heart of Bangalore culture, beer culture. But in the boon talks of Bangalore. Yeah. Heart of its culture, but far from the city. This is the only thing that allowed us, and also because the amount of footprint required to do this, it would be cost prohibitive to do it in the center of the city. Correct, and also I think producers, and we can clarify that with the CEO, is that apparently it runs on industrial license, which you don't get inside the city, you only get it on the outskirts. Yeah. And these guys originally were just brewers. They didn't have this outlet where they served. They used to provide the beer to different bars across the city, and there's a lot of them. It's going to be interesting. Shanky is not a beer drinker. I'm not. Yeah, and they only serve beer. I was hoping that for the camera, I'll do a couple of beers and then move to whiskey, but... Uh... No, it's going to be beer only. This means no food at all. That I'm okay with today. Yeah. Today is just not my day. It was veg lunch, beer in the evening. Just gonna have a few beers, not eat anything, curl up in bed, cry myself to sleep tonight. After so many seasons, I've stopped telling him what we're doing. Have you noticed? Shanky's every now and then says, where are we going? What is the information? Where is the group? Shanky's not in the group that decides. <laughs> Shanky's not in the change because Shanky would say, Oh, I have an idea. I'm like, no, 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 everything is set. Hey, just come here. <laughs> so, Shanky's like, okay. Now he wakes up and goes, shit, lunch, vegetarian, evening, all beers. But anyways, I uh, think we should get uh, Narayan. Mm. Narayanan? Narayan. So that's what I've realized. When you're in South of India, no. You have Narayanan, you have Narayana, you have Narayan. So when you just, because you don't want to get into that, no, just say, Narayan. Uh, 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 they expect uh, uh, it uh, uh, at the uh, end. Whatever the end, you don't have to bother. Just an errand. But just before that, this is one thing I did learn. Bangalore has the highest number of microbreweries in the world. Highest number in a city. It's called so, the pub capital of India, I know I that. I think it might be the pub capital of the world. We can clarify. It also has the world's largest microbrewery just opened here, called Iron Hill. <laughs> Am I getting it right? Narayan. No, no. I hold you origin for, for some reason. Geist was on our list from a lot of our fans. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. I figured Geist that you're going with. Actually, it, it came from that word. It came from Zeitgeist. The Zeitgeist, yeah. yeah. Geist means the spirit of things. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. He's, 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 because we're in the south, everybody has a tea guy. That's not the... <laughs> If you look at this logo, uh, it looks like the brush stroke. Yeah. The guy who did this, his name is Vinayak Varma, and he's the great great grandson of Raja Ravi Varma. Okay, yeah, I know. He painted all of our yeah. ex-relatives yeah. relative there. Right. His was. This is about, you know, 
you will not send out any painting, mm -hmm. the artist will not sign it mm -hmm. until he's fully he or she is fully satisfied with the painting. Mm -hmm. So he says, if you're happy with the beers that you put out, only then can you put the name guys. So this is a brush stroke. Oh, lovely. And so this we naively call as the master stroke. Oh, the master. <laughs> That's a nice clap. <laughs> like, I don't know about it's going to work, right. but let's do this. That's right. I moved back from the US really? in 2003 to do this, right? And in 2006, we incorporated Geist with my business partner and my schoolmate. At that time, to get a license was almost impossible. We couldn't get a license. And so we're like, shucks, we want to do craft beer, so what do we do? So friends of ours told us and said, hey, go abroad. You've got your recipes made. And I had a brewery in my garage in Oregon where I lived. Okay. You're in Oregon? Yeah. I worked with Intel. Okay. Yeah. I figured out this was the next question. And you're a former investment banker, I'm told, right? I'm still, I'm hopefully, I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. So I basically lived in the US for 15 years. Okay. I worked with Intel for pretty much all of that time and then built a brewery in my garage, moved that brewery back to here, okay. did lots of experiments and had a bunch of recipes. Okay. So we took that abroad, got it made and brought it back. And so we started in 2008-9 to, to basically distribute our beers in bottles at that time because okay. we couldn't get a license to manufacture. Okay. We obviously didn't make, an, we lost money hand over fist, but it taught us this whole concept of distribution and how to deal with the government licensing. The thing with beer is the more you know, the less you know. So, yeah. you, know, so you can experiment and still be a happy yeah, accident, absolutely. but the government is never a happy accident. Absolutely. This uh, started because of what happened at Big Brew Sky in uh, Sarjapur, uh, where we were brewing the beers there. Uh, and our customers came and told us and said, guys, love your beers, hate this Bangalore traffic, please make it available closer to where we live. And microbreweries in Karnataka are not allowed to sell beyond premise. So you can only serve within premise. So we are the first distribution craft brewery which is basically a glorified microbrewery, but on an industrial license. So we're allowed to not only make the beer and serve it here, we can sell it out in kegs and cans, in bottles, we can send it outside the state. Thank you so much once again. When you say cheers with beer, you have to look, look in, the, in eye. the eyes. The consequences are not good. Right? Yeah, I know. I know. Now let's do this again then. <laughs> and, but, again? No, so now yeah. this was my German, German boss, right? Yeah. And it will get intimidating because then you'll be like... <laughs> I would like to understand why Bangalore is different than anywhere else in the country. And people are generally responsible and not gross about it, right? So you have the, the, the gentrified lot, the Latians lot who will enjoy a good whiskey now and then. But I find a lot of people just drink to get smashed. Bangalore seems to hold it with certain level of responsibility. And then they can enjoy a drink in the afternoon and the regulations now are built around. So what makes it so? I mean, I think, you know, some part of it, we'll have to give credit to Mr. Malia. Okay. Because uh, the concept of the pub culture has always existed here because of draft beer that he actually allowed breweries to send directly to restaurants. So, right. yeah, so one of the things that Kingfisher did was to convince the government of Karnataka mm. saying that, hey, we can send fresh beer directly to restaurants, hotels, clubs, etc., etc. There's been now decades of, of experience yeah. of people drinking initially in places like Pub World and Hangover and NASA and whatever else, right? And that's kind of graduated towards this being one of the first cities to allow microbreweries to happen mm. because of IT. A lot of influence from people mm. traveling abroad. Traveling abroad yeah foreigners coming here, enjoying beers here. Yeah. So I think everybody's kind of learning and yeah. there's a heritage of drinking fresh beer here yeah. and drinking beer mm. in Bangalore. I actually believe that um, IPAs in the US, like you said, it's kind of gone stupidly hoppy. Yeah. Whereas in India now, there is a growing category of people that want more bitter beers because once you do the wheats and the yeah, whites yeah. and stuff like that, you're saying, okay, what next? Yeah. Then you'll try the blonde, then you'll try something hoppier. Yeah. IPAs will work. So you've got to make beers like you make food, which is it has to be in balance. You can't have it too salty or too spicy or too sweet or yeah. too sour. Therefore, a good IPA to me is balanced maltiness with hoppiness. Nice aroma, nice taste. Should be more accessible. I mean, Absolutely. I feel there's like, with the hipster culture, there is this, again, like, darker and darker or more and more bitter and it's like okay i don't get it anymore yeah so if you smell it you should get mango citrus right? yeah citrus strong yeah. yeah and when you drink it it's actually a very very approachable ipa you don't get over overwhelmed by that really nice oh that is i'm going to switch for that next i tried the kama sitra it's an ipa very fruity and like 
Narayan was saying, accessible means it's not overdoing its IPA play, which is sometimes it's just got this really strange burnt caramel notes or this bitter, bitter hops notes. I find in a lot of IPAs, there's this banana, rotting banana thing that this carries over. That's part of the maturation, the mashing process that comes out. One of the metrics to measure beer is called IBU, that yeah. stands for International Bittering Units. Mm -hmm. Most kind IB, uh, IBU for an IPA in the US is going to start at about 80. This is about 43, right? So we've kind of toned it down. Because this is the kind of beer we enjoy drinking. It's about drinkability. So there's no point in making beers for, you know, 100 people. Yeah. You want to get this beer out to as many get people as they sure, can, right? Sure. So what we heard was that earlier, or I think you also just mentioned it, that earlier you guys were just bottling. This establishment is new, right? Yeah. Like where you started off yeah. serving here as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So was that in the plan or that was just... It was in the plan. Yeah. I think, I remember the first day we walked into this place to look at this place, I saw this banyan tree. And I said, man, we have to do a beer garden here. And for the first three years of our existence, we, had, we were only making beers and sending fresh beer in kegs. Mm to hotels, clubs, pubs, etc. Okay, wow. Are you guys still doing that, right? We're still doing it. Okay. Because of the fact that young people who wanted to go to microbreweries, mm -hmm. there are a whole bunch of people who had no idea how to be, make beer. And to set up a microbrewery is expensive, dealing with the excise department is, you know, is difficult. So we said, okay, we'll send beers to you guys, mm -hmm. fresh every day, and you can convert yourself into a microbrewery with no investment. So this started October 2020, right at the pandemic, right? Oh. We opened, the thing was chock-a-block full. Really? Yeah, it was full. And then February 2021, mm. locked down again. Locked. The way beer is made is you take any grain. Sure. It could be wheat, barley, jawa, ragi, bajra, yeah. whatever. By the way, beer is made with four ingredients, right? Malt, water, hops, and yeast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is malt? Malt is when you take a grain, and you've already experienced malting in your lives already. You, you've had a sprouted da sambar, or a sprouted yeah. dal, or a sprouted bhaji, or a salad of some yeah. kind. Sprouting is the process of malting, yeah. where you take that grain, and then you steep it in water, yeah. remove the water, and it starts to develop a root. You dry it at that point. The inside of that grain has converted from complex to simpler carbohydrates and makes many of those carbohydrates accessible to brewers like us right. to take out and then convert to sugar. Yeah. That sugar water, you then add hops to, mm. and you cool it down and you ferment it. And when you ferment it, yeast will eat the sugar and give you ethanol, mm. which is your alcohol, and gives you CO2. Yeah. And that CO2 gets trapped back in the beer yeah, that's to give the beer its fizz. And you know, the thing that I love about craft beer is every great beer that I've had, yeah. I remember that moment. And that's what I keep telling people. To me, craft beer is about like meeting your first girlfriend. Yeah. No offense to any of your wives or ex-wives. Ex yeah. I feel like a Saudi sheikh every time that story <laughs> comes out. <laughs> Except no money, no jet, and no gold. And I remember every single moment that I've had a great beer. I remember exactly where I was and how I felt. Yeah. I apparently lack macro, micro expressions. I only have macro expressions. <laughs> <laughs> Worst fucking thing ever if you're getting into television or trying to make content like this. You don't like something, it's like, oh. <laughs> no, but I think what, what is nice about you guys is authenticity. Yeah, that's the only thing we are banking and on. That's the only thing when that you matters. lack skill, it's all authenticity. But honestly, authenticity. honestly speaking, that's the only thing that matters. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> Food knowledge is there. I mean, I will I will hold my callers up for that. Like, I mean, this is a work of art. <laughs> Right? This is curated through meal by meal by meal. A lot of investment. A lot of investment. Yeah. Hasn't yielded <laughs> at all yet. <laughs> now my wife said, wait, you have made this into a career or what? <laughs> 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 I'm like, well, I mean, yeah. I'm going to take another one. I'm going to do a carry me over. Do note one thing, that everything is color coordinated, which is not the way a flight is served. A flight is served the way it's a taste profile and I think the way it should ascend or you should taste it according to the ascension of how strong it is or the strength of the flavor. I'm just going to start tasting them. Super light, fruity. I think I'm going to say a fruity very often. This one is the one which is made for desi people like me. That's such a nice beer. I want more. Who don't like that hoppy taste. So this one I'm going to down. Am I supposed to not bring that again? Silly pine. This is the India Pale Lager. Oh, slightly more full-bodied. Again, slightly more hoppy notes in there. That is... Um, Either one of the two is the which beer. I don't know. I don't think I had that the first time around. Oh, this is also very nice. 
This is the K Kimi Sutra? No, that is the Kimi Sutra. The, the James Bond. James Bond. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Slightly more hoppy. Uh, mango flavors. This is the Kama Sutra. Sorry, my mistake. Kama Sutra, the IPA. I'm gonna clean my palate too. Lager. Slightly bitter. This is James Blonde. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You're just going to keep saying fruity, 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 you know? Nice, subtle, round. Uh, Marilyn Monroe. Rocco Feller, which is a smoked wheat beer. This is the Kama Sutra. This is the one that smells like mango. Slightly more mature Marilyn Monroe. I'm so bad at this because it's beer. German lager. Very light, tastes like water. And this is the Uncle Dunko. What did you say? Slightly German. German dark wheat beer, come. Okay guys, welcome guys. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So this is Man, where me, the magic happens. Let me start happens. with, this is the neatest floor I've ever seen for That's any unit. Is it like a lab? It has to be. 6,000 liters each. Our brew house mm -hmm. is 3,000 liters, which means we brew twice to fill up a tank. Okay. Yeah? And pre-COVID, we were brewing about three, four times a week. So we have cans now in the, in the retail market. So the same beer that you drank yeah. is also now in these cans. And they hold the yeah, yeah, yeah. quality Absolutely. for a while? Absolutely. One thing we're very clear about is that we wanted to make sure everything was built here, except for a few components that we got from abroad. So if anything breaks down, we can go under the hood and we can fix it. You know, I was telling you, right? There are so many varieties of coriander. This is the beauty of India. Yeah. Now, if I select a coriander that has got oils, the head will collapse. So you've got to select it carefully. So we get our grain from one small farmer based in Gujarat. Oh, wow. oh Gujarat. really? Yeah. All the way? All the way. Everybody thinks what you, the final product is just the product in itself. The effort that goes behind it is phenomenal, right? And look at the amount of work and effort that has gone in. For nine uh, kinds of beer, you would have done a few hundred experiments. Easily. Easily, right? So it's combination, it's trial, it's error. And as Narayan said, everything that could go wrong, went wrong. But it is from that trial. So if you want to persevere, you want to do something, you got to fight a little bit harder, right? You don't give up. Even on the 10th mistake, you don't go, ah, life is defeating me. For us, the show is the same thing. We've got our asses kicked trying to build this. It's a self-funded show. It should be easy, it's not. It's a lot of work. Everybody standing behind you has done a lot of work behind it. You guys don't know, but there's at least about seven people standing behind you right now. <laughs> Make the hoof out, try something different. Then it's actually a craft. It's not uh, called craft beer. Because it sounds like else. a hipster word. There's craft, craft that goes into it. it. He was making cutting edge technology with Intel. And then he got into cutting in technology of uh, yeah. beer. And that's why he has this product. We were doing no cutting in technology. We were just <laughs> fucking talking nonsense. It's time to do some cutting edge drinking right now. Yeah, yeah. We're going to get back to drinking. Peace. Cut. Peace. Cut. Not a big beer guy, but absolutely love my, my time there. Narayan is such a wonderful host. And he's also a pioneer in the city. A lot of new microbreweries get really big into the IPA game, which IPA means India Pale Ale. And in India Pale Ale, they really push the hoppiness. Hops are an ingredient which increase and have the potential to increase the bitterness. Much power to him, uh, very humble. The entire team was, was, was very supportive. And they're, they're also fans of the show. What a wonderful experience and I got to learn a lot more. So yeah, look forward to actually going back there and maybe trying the food next time. I don't really understand craft because I don't understand the beer game too much. But this time around was the first time I actually understood the craft behind that beer. I mean, the knowledge that the man has or that the people need to create a craft beer, it's immense. After doing hundreds of experiments, he's come out with nine recipes, which he claims are good craft and they are good craft. We tried all of them and every single one of them was amazing. So yes, I would definitely push more of you guys to go and try craft beer. And guys, generally they're open for you guys to go and do try a tour, tour, go yeah. do a tour of the brewery as well.